thanks so much for coming to chat to me. It's I'm right. really interested. Um, and I think, you know, the first thing I'm really interested in is your story. Okay. Um, you know, ultimately, you're, you know, where you're at now in your business, but sort of how you, you know, your journey, um, your journey with your career and um, what interested you to sign language to start with and then how that developed for you. Okay. Um, so I learned sign language about 12 years ago. Okay. Uh, just out of interest. Yeah. There was no sort of... Um, amazing reason to be honest I yeah. just thought it looked pretty cool yeah um, and I'm quite a shy person so I wasn't sure how I would take to it because um, yeah. it's a very expressive language obviously yes. um, but I just really enjoyed it and fell in love with it and since then um, I've been involved in the deaf community so mostly most of my learning has been really just through the deaf community themselves and just learning associating um, you know with the deaf community and, and learning that way um, and then I got involved in a few uh, sports teams, so um, communicating for the sports teams, deaf sports teams, um, that type of thing. And then later on I met my husband who's deaf um, and we're um, obviously married now and, and yeah, just both of us are involved in the deaf community and we have three children which are um, bilingual so that we use sign language at home to communicate. And um, I think just having a real passion for sign language, I really wanted to include it in my work life. Yes. If I could, that would be the ultimate, you know, yeah, yeah. working, doing something you love is, you know. Yes. So, um, and, and having met Victoria through my husband, our husbands play deaf cricket together. They okay. met in India on a, on a tour for deaf cricket. So, um, we kind of met through our husbands and, and we just had, I guess, a shared philosophy about sign language and, and really the desire to get it promoted in New Zealand and become normalised in society. So, and from that really sort of grew merge and the mm. concept of, of having this sort of two worlds come together. Mm. So I'd like to you know, talk to you a little about um, the business but just sort of go back a bit. So you talked about being quite shy. Do you think, and obviously sign language is um, you know, very expressive, do you think you've become more confident um, as a result of understanding that language and being involved um, with the deaf community? It's needing to be more open in your in your body language. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a, it was a huge learning curve, really, mm. because um, obviously, as you said, sign is heavily has body language and expressive is really expressive language. So, yeah, it has made me come out of my shell a bit. Um, it's obviously very visual, so there's a lot of. Um, um, you know, obviously presentations, a lot of eye contact as well. I'm a shy, shy person, but you know, having a lot of maintaining that eye contact can be hard. So that's something I've had to learn. Yes. Um, but it's been, yeah, really great for me, I think, personally, yes. to, to sort of come out of my shell a bit. And yeah, and I actually find it easier to say things in sign than I do in spoken English. I just, I, I, I'm not really sure why that is. I think it's just, um, but I that just be feel a bit more comfortable in that. Is that everything you find easier or specific things that might be more difficult to, that you find? Um, I'd rather present, uh, you know, to a group in sign language than I would in English. Okay, so that's really um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah very mm. interesting. Um, maybe it's because you, in, you know, in spoken English, we get very hung up on our words and yes. we, if we muff up a word, we, we get embarrassed, whereas presumably that isn't something that would happen in sign language. Oh, well, there's obviously um, the right, you know, making sure that the language that you're using is right and appropriate. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, it would be interesting. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but... Yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Merge, you know, and what you actually do at Merge. So I guess it's all in the name, so yes. the, the goal is for us to sort of merge the two worlds, so mm. the hearing world and the deaf world, sign language and English, um, and the cultures as well, so the hearing culture and the deaf culture, and it's all about making um, New Zealand sign language normalised in society. So um, it's sort of the way today it has yes. become, so most people know Kia ora or um, you know, um, aroha, things, signs like that, or sorry, words like that, and so we'd love to see the same for sign language, you know, people being able to say, how are you? Um, you know, coffee, tea, just those sort of everyday um, conversations that you'd have. If people could do that in sign language, it would just create a whole new world of access to the deaf yes. community. And that would just, yeah, yes. be great. Would you say that Merge was, um, you know, that there's other organisations that are, you know, driving for a similar thing? Or is Merge sort of quite, has it come out of a real need, a real sort of vacuum in society for, you know, um, to promote the language? I think there's always a need for deaf-led businesses mm. and I think that's um, why merge is, is important because we do have that sort of perspective ourselves of, of a deaf person and a hearing person working together and obviously cu cultural decisions it's really important that a, a deaf person makes those so that's where Victoria takes the lead in, in the organisation. 
Um, I think there's definitely a need in New Zealand for New Zealand Sign Language tutors, which is a gap that we've started to fill up. Mm. Um, tutors themselves in New Zealand don't have a lot of professional development training, mm. so really there's a huge need for someone to train the tutors how to teach out in the community, mm. and that gives these people more jobs, it gives them more professional development, and it benefits the wider community as well, because you know they get to learn sign language from qualified tutors. Yes, so you actually do, tr you train you train them, you do a lot of that in-house training. Yes, that's yep. right. So talk to me a bit, um, I mean I noticed on the website, you know, you're obviously involved in programs in schools and in organisations, sort of within the business community, um, if you're running a program, what might that involve for an organisation? So there's kind of two types, there's the deaf culture um, awareness type trainings, um, and then there's the sign language. So um, deaf culture is, is kind of a new concept to people, people don't sort of think of the deaf community as being a, a cultural group, but they are, they're a yes. cultural group, they have their own language, their own traditions, their own behaviours, um, so that's what we kind of teach to people, that um, the deaf community should be looked upon as a cultural group, um, and we just give a little bit of insight into deaf culture, um, and also the perspectives of being deaf, so um, there's sort of a medical perspective of being deaf, about deafness and the, you know, the ability not to be able to hear. And then the cultural perspective of being deaf, as in I'm deaf and I'm happy and I'm proud and, and that's not a problem, that's who I am and that's my identity. So we kind of um, give people that, I guess, an insight of the, the two different perspectives of, de of, of being deaf and, and what the community is. And, um, and how that. do you think that changes the perspective of um, you know, those, those businesses, those organisations? What do well, you think they get it, from that? Yeah, yeah, we hope it gives them, um, I guess, the um, confidence to know that they can hire a deaf person yes. in their business and that it's not a barrier, it's not a, um, a disability or something that sort of um, creates problems. It's actually just a person from a different cultural group and there's ways that you can get around language, um, you know, communication tips, that type of thing. Um, and it can work, you know, and mm. deaf people can add add different things to the business that they wouldn't have necessarily had if they didn't have that deaf employee there. So, and also, obviously, um, customer service based businesses, it's really important that they just know how to communicate with their deaf clients if they're um, in the public, um, you know, meeting the public, obviously they're going to come across a deaf person, nurses yeah. are going to come across deaf people, you know, deaf people have kids, they go to hospital, they, um, you know, all the other things that everyone else does. So it's important that they have access and it'll be great if the people that they meet along the journey um, know how to communicate with them in an, in an appropriate way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you um, talked about sort of the cultural difference. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what you notice? You know, it could be on a personal level as well as on a professional level, about the cultural differences between the deaf community and the hearing community? Sure. Um, so from a hearing perspective, I guess it's... Um, the deaf community really value eye contact, so that's mm. one thing. Um, personally, I've had to sort of work on this. So when you yes. have a conversation with someone in sign language, breaking that eye contact can be considered rude. So it's yes. really important to sort of maintain that that eye contact. Um, deaf people really value information sharing, so sort of coming together and sharing information with each other. And I guess that comes from you know lack of information and lack of accessibility out there. You know, you and I can watch the TV news and get information about what's happening around the world. But if it's not captioned, which is often the case, deaf people miss out on all that information. Yeah. So that sharing of knowledge, that coming together and really um, yeah, sharing that information with each other is really important for the deaf community. Mm. How do you think you know that sort of being involved so much in that, that um, community and that culture has affected you and how you interact. I mean, you talked you know, a couple of times about being, um, having been shy and having struggled in the past with eye contact and now you give such wonderful <laughs> eye contact. So it must have sort of had an impact on you sort of um, when you're just having a conversation in the hearing world as well in English. Um, would you say that was true? And what, what sort of other ways do you think, um, you know, I, I think there's, um, not that I know an awful lot, I don't know anything actually about um, sign language, but um, because it is so much more physical and I think um, often we don't use our physicality enough yes. in our communication mm -hmm. or we're using it but we're very unaware whereas it must, you must sort of have that sort of heightened awareness around mm -hmm. using your physicality. Yeah, it's definitely powerful. I mean, you know, expression can add meaning to a sign, it can change, the, you know, it can change the meaning and without expression the, the complete, you know, the meaning of the sentence or the meaning of the sign can be lost. Yes. So, yeah, I think it's definitely becoming more aware of, of how we do use our bodies and our expression and offer, as you said, you, you don't often think about the power of expression and that type of thing. We kind of rely on the tone of our voice and the words that we choose. Um, whereas in sign language it's all about you know, body movement and, and, and expression to show those types of things. 
Yeah, and, and obviously when you learn about a different culture, a new language, I think it really helps you anyway, just to sort of open your eyes to what else, a different perspective of the world, and and um, I guess the barriers that deaf people face, it's becoming more aware of that, and, and it sort of um, enforces to me, I guess, the need that we need to do something about it. Yes. You know, um, especially having now, obviously having a husband who's deaf, we face barriers in our everyday life um, because of that, and we just want to find solutions to them, and yeah, because it's, a, it's an amazing community, and I yes. think... Um, you know, anyone who sort of dabbles in sign language and learns a bit always, you know, comments it's such a welcoming community, it's such a great environment to be in, and it really is, and it would just be nice to share that with, with more people. Yes. Are there sort of any sort of particular things that um, you think that um, the deaf community to do really well that perhaps we could um, take on board, we can learn um, to do more, to do better ourselves? Um, just, I guess, from my perspective is, um, in the deaf community, there doesn't seem to be age barriers, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. if you go to the deaf club on a Friday night, there's older deaf, there's younger deaf. It's just nice mm. that there's, there's, it's just this common shared, it's a commonality, really, of the language, and that, that's really cool to see. Um, I bring my children along, uh, you know, and we can, and they sort of mix with other children who have deaf parents, and it's just this, it's really an extended family. Mm. Which is, which so it's is a really very nice. inclusive um, environment. Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Is, um, do you know any other sign languages apart from New Zealand Sign? Do you know? Um, so um, New Zealand Sign Language is developed from Australian Sign Language mm -hmm. and British Sign Language, so they're kind of sister languages. So there's about 30% difference between all those three languages. Okay. Um, so I probably cope okay with Auslan, um, Australian Sign Language and British Sign Language, um, but no, I wouldn't sound fluent in any other sign yes. language other than, than New Zealand. How much connect, and there may be no connection at all, um, but how much connection is there between um, New Zealand Sign and um, sort of New Zealand culturally? Um, so obviously, you know, in um, English, there's a big difference between um, uh, spoken um, New Zealand English and um, Australian English, for example. Um, how closely is the New Zealand sign sort of developed because of the culture to New Zealand? Or what's, is there a link? Yeah, yeah no, that's a great question. There's definitely um, uniqueness to New Zealand sign language because obviously we have the Māori perspective, so we have a lot of Māori concepts. Um, there's in a separate Māori sign language, so a lot of those are Māori and today are um, parts of the language are put into sign language, so um, yeah, that's really unique to New Zealand. Yes. Um, and there's other slight differences, like um, Auslan seems to use more finger spelling. They finger spell a lot more of the, the words, whereas um, New Zealand is a little bit more expressive, and so um, yeah, there's definitely um, differences, but there's, um, yeah, I guess New Zealand is mo what makes it most uni unique is having those Māori concepts in it. Mm. So it's really, it, yeah, it has a New Zealand real identity, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you so much yeah, for right. talking to me. I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. And I could talk and talk and talk, but <laughs> I know that we're all pressed for time. So, and it'd be lovely to talk to Victoria as well. Yeah, so no thank problem. you so much, Jamie.